description, and I'll go through specific stocks which I found in using the software for you this evening and how I find short-term trading spread betting opportunities as well on the software. So you're about to see that uh, as well and, uh, and hear some specific names as well as get the general training that you're looking for as well. So let's start. Okay, like I said, what we're going to talk about in this part is using the Arpish Patel Special Edition for profit. Uh, I'm going to give an overview of tables, ratings, filters, radars, all the things that you see on there, how I use it, how I get stock ideas, how I get accurate, uh, and so that it gets used, the techniques get used in the magazines um, that you have. Uh, seen that I put up there, uh, magazine covers and so on, and, and the Financial Times. I've used it in all of those uh, to, to predict accurately and forecast accurately which way I think the markets are going. And I'll give you names uh, to show you examples of, of that done this evening. Uh, what I'm also going to do is uh, show you uh, uh, right towards the end one particular stop loss mechanism or method and the reason for that is a professional method we use it in our own funds uh, uh, the reason for that is because people rightly also want to know uh, also want to know trading techniques so I'm going to do that as well so let me give you the overview this is the basic screen you would see on ShareScope Arbitral Special Edition if you clicked on the momentum indicator and what I'm going to do is don't worry about reading the screen on your computers I'm going to read it for you um, so let me kick off uh, my first stop is the Alpesh table and I'll click on that and show you that in a moment is the Alpesh Patel table the that's my first stop it lays out stocks uh, the way I want to see them so I can quickly rank to see who's got cheap, who's cheap so price earnings growth ratios and the things I look for I'll show you in a second um, or uh, who's uh, uh, growing and so on uh, uh, and that tends to be my first stop the next stop and, I, and I, as I say I'll go through actual images of this this is just the overview now I'll go through uh, the momentum and these other radars that you see down here uh, momentum breadth volatility and volume radars uh, which graph stocks in a way which allows us to see whether they're likely to move up now I use momentum each day uh, but the rest, breadth, volatility, volume, relatively infrequently, uh, and only if I'm very unsure. But momentum, I use daily. I'm going to show you how I use that. I'm going to show you names of stocks which have come up today based upon that and how that gives rise to spread betting opportunities or short-term trading opportunities as well uh, uh, when you click upon momentum. Uh, and then you've got my filters. Okay, So in a way, you can put it into three bits, table, radar, filters and I'm going to talk through the filters uh, as well now my filters show well basically out of these filters that you can see down there uh, uh, and they filter through stocks as the name suggests my favorite is the value growth for a 12 month holding and in a separate webinar I'll talk about that momentum value is shorter term and looks for undervalued stocks which show momentum so it's looking at momentum yet undervaluation uh, uh, which suggests that no, they're not just going up on hot air because they're undervalued, but they do have momentum at the same time. Now, it's higher risk since momentum-based is a one- to three-month outlook, and then the bearish, bullish momentum uh, uh, are there to give me very short-term daily views of stocks about to pop. The fundamental way in which I analyze all of those, value growth, uh, sorry, momentum value, bearish momentum, and bullish momentum, all those with momentum in the name, uh, I'm going to show you uh, 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 the techniques that I use to... to to uh, evaluate those stocks and how we get at it. And then finally, box number four, or, or the final box, is my ratings on every stock, which you see up here, which gives a value growth rating, and I'll go through that as well. What does it mean? Uh, how do I get to that value growth rating? Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's ranked out of 10, and any stocks, uh, and, and this is for longer-term holdings, uh, which... Uh, 7 out of 10 is pretty high. Nothing ever pretty much reaches 10. It usually peaks at 9 out of 10, uh, and it's based on valuations, which uh, I look at, uh, which are principally price earnings growth and price earnings, and then I also look at growth, such as revenue growth and earnings growth, and finally also on income. Now, I'm going to talk about that in a separate webinar because that's more for longer term 12 month holdings today I'm going to talk on the short term end which is means we're going to focus on the Alpesh table momentum well anything with momentum on it's so a momentum radar and momentum filters 
uh, we're going to talk about in this one. Uh, so now that's just the overview of all the bits. You're familiar with the bits uh, here. Uh, let me just, uh, um, before I move on to the, to the next slide, is just recap that table. And then we've got the radars. And then we've got the filters. Okay? And I'm going to go through each one of those in turn and what they do and how I use them. And then finally, you've just got the ratings for every stock, which is for a 12-month holding for those who are looking at undervalued stocks showing uh, good growth prospects. Okay? So, let's start off with radar. You will remember radar was down here, momentum radar was down here. When I click on that, this is the image I will see, and it will see the charts laid out the way I want to see them. And principally, with securities, one of the key things I'm looking at, whatever time frame I'm looking to trade, in this case it's one month bars for Berenstain, uh, I'm looking for the MACD to have flattened. Uh, I don't look at it the way they do in textbooks, because uh, I don't think that's accurate enough. I'm looking for it to have flattened and started rising. This stochastic is premature to the MACD, so I'd expect it to already be rising if the MACD is. Now, that then suggests to me that there is momentum in these trends. But I don't just look at that time frame, the one month time frame. I will, uh, on the basis of that, and see that being bullish, know therefore that if the one week time frame is showing uh, similar uh, rises on the momentum indicators, that we've got, we've got multi time frame confirmation of momentum. And that makes me very bullish on a particular security. I don't just want to look at the period I'm trading at, but I want to look at the one further out. Uh, and when I click on M, it immediately allows me to see uh, stocks which are uh, which show me flat to rising MACD and rising stochastic, and that gives me uh, a, a confidence to be long. Or, of course, the obvious is uh, the reverse is obviously uh, to go short, uh, and that is phenomenally accurate when combined with not just that time frame, uh, but uh, uh, the next time frame. Now, somebody's just said uh, my uh, my share cut doesn't have the tabs for daily, weekly, monthly time frames. Uh, it, it actually will. It's probably just been hidden. And the way to do that is um, I won't go through all all the bits on how you add those kind of um, timeline tabs and so on, but if you ping ShareScope an email, they will uh, answer any of those, and they, you can easily add those day, week, uh, monthly uh, tabs on there. Uh, so that's not a problem. Uh, and uh, it makes life incredibly easy when I do this. Now, the insight here that I want to give you with this, very straightforward insight I want to give you, is I'm looking at not just that time frame, whether it's one day or one week, but the one further out. So it's one day that I want to look at one week, if it's one week I want to look at one month. And I want to see the MACD flat to rising, and the stochastic I'd expect already to take it off. The accuracy levels of that mean that if in both time frames that's happening, the one week and the one month, or the one day and one week, then I am avoiding a lot of rubbish trades. I'm avoiding all the ones where, you know, you get in, it's been falling, it rises a bit, you get in, and then it drops off. Well, the reason it drops off is because the further time frame is going in the opposite direction, and you've got in too early. Um, so this is what avoids that problem. I find momentum invaluable. Clicking on that button, everything's set and sorted for me. And you can see it here. You click on that one, and it will... Uh, and then on month, there, you can see where the button is, and I'm sorted. I have got that the momentum was flat to rising. Uh, I can check that it's the one-month bars. Uh, uh, and if I'm looking at a longer-term holding, because I'm looking at the monthlies, uh, then I'll also look to make sure the value growth rating is at 8 or 9, because that tells me that, hey, I've not only just got momentum, because I'm looking at monthly bars, so that's going to be, you know, a three- or four-month holding at least, if not 12 months. Uh, uh, and I'll get to shorter time frames in a second then I know that, hey, if I'm looking at something with momentum and it's got value and growth, and in other words, on a PE and um, price earnings growth basis and a growth rating basis, um, it's up there. So you can see how I'm saving time. I'm no longer needing to customize these charts, add all the bits in, uh, and then work out PE ratios for each It's all done for me. I've automated it to save myself so much time that developing it uh, one-off and then not having to constantly repeat it means I can see in a 
in 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 an instant uh, uh, how stocks uh, and which stocks I like and how they're behaving and so on. So uh, what you see there, therefore, uh, becomes uh, uh, my basic format. I click on momentum. I'm looking at the one monthly. I'm looking for the stochastic oil rate to have risen. I'm looking for the MACD just to be flat to rising and then the price to be moving. And I want to see that in both time frames, the monthly or the one week and one month or the daily and the weekly. Uh, okay, that's incredibly important to be able to do that. It saves me uh, a phenomenal amount of time. So that's, that's momentum, the momentum radar we just dealt with. What about the Alpesh table? Why is that set up the way it is? How do I find spread betting opportunities looking at that then? Uh, and in actual fact, uh, let me put across and uh, just show you on the screen, for instance. Let me just show you uh, this. Now, somebody name me a, let's keep it simple, name me a FTSE 100 uh, stock that you're particularly interested in. Just, just type it in. And I'm going to look it up to see if we can do this uh, live. And I can actually show you. Okay, great. Tesco's. I've got Tesco's. I'm going to look up because the computer system's putting this uh, live. Oh, actually, I like I like the fact some of these mentioned Bellway. Um, but let me see. Actually, the computer's going to be incredibly slow just because we're recording this. We're using a lot of computer power. I might have to come back to that because I wanted to show you that live. But I think I might have to come back to that just because. Uh, I've got four screens on at the moment, and that means that uh, I think the computer just kills everything. Uh, okay, so um, let's go for the table, and I'll come back to ShareScope in a second. Alpesh table, uh, what does it mean? Why do I look at it? What it does for me, it shows me in one go so that I can see immediately which stocks I am most likely to go long or short. Now, let's deal with long first. Because I can rank them according to their their two-day trading range, their five-day um, trading, uh, basically how much they've moved, I get a pretty good idea to see uh, which ones have got momentum. I also get to see uh, which ones uh, and their valuations, because I want to look at the peg, uh, and I also get to see uh, their charts and their, their value ratings that I just showed you on the images. Now, that will allow me very quickly, and what I tend to do is sort by the value growth rating, so I can see which are strong, uh, and then within those, I'll look to see which have got the most momentum. Now, if I want to trade relatively short term, I'm going to look for those which have gone up over the last two to five days, and then I'm going to click on that and click on momentum so I can look at the chart and just confirm that the momentum is as I just showed you in the last picture. Well, what this table does is it saves, again, loads of time. It allows me to rank very quickly by value growth which ones have got the best opportunities over the longer term and then in the short term which ones have already shown a bit of momentum and then I click on momentum uh, radar to have a look at them and see yep I can see the MACD rising right bang uh, that's something I am interested in and therefore want to do I'll give you an example of that kind of analysis and how it happens in reality uh, so uh, if I'm trading let's say over a slightly longer term period, so not just over how it's been over the last couple of days, but let's say we want to see the price movement over the last couple of weeks, uh, last few months as well. So I think something's got an upward bias, but I also think it's got relatively good valuations, cheap valuations, low peg. So I know that in the short term, if I'm long, uh, I've got a reason to be long because I'm going to have looked at my momentum radar, seen the MACD and the stochastic rising, but in the uh, longer term, I can also see prices have been rising and valuations are relatively low so that there's a rising tide pushing it from the longer term perspective which gives me downside protection, gives me downside protection that it's relatively undervalued because you need to know that even when you're short term trading because it's those all those long term valuations which we make on a day to day basis just inch it a bit higher, an inch at a time, inch it a bit higher uh, on the daily momentum and that's what tends to happen and that's why I want to see I want to be a buy I want to be biased towards even short term trading stocks which are relatively undervalued because although valuations is a long term way of looking at stocks it's the fact that they're relatively undervalued that I know they can't fall back too much if I'm going to be going long those stocks 
Similarly, if I was looking at small caps, and let's say I wanted to look at, I'm going to sort by three months. This is going to be my Arpish Patel table, uh, and I'm going to look for key characteristics, which are showing me uh, pegs, which are showing me pretty cheap pegs, which are showing me uh, consistent moves over uh, three, six, two months, uh, and over the short term. And then the next thing to do when I've clicked on any one of them is look at the momentum radar to see is in this time frame, whether it's the daily or otherwise, and the weekly, is the MACD uh, flat to rising and is the stochastic rising. When all those things, and this allows me to do it within seconds, when all those things are happening, I know, bang, this is one I'm interested in. I'll come to stop losses and so on in a second. Then it tells me, right, that's a stock I want to be uh, having uh, a spread bet on. I want to be long on. Uh, uh, as a result of that. So you've got the sorting, but you've got to know what to sort. You've got to know that the short term is impacted by the long term. You've got to know that you're looking for that momentum. You're also looking for the valuation that comes with pegs. Uh, and then you know, you've got to know you're looking at the MAC, the, the momentum radar. So you're looking at the MACD and stochastic. Sounds like a lot, but it isn't when you're only clicking two buttons. You're clicking the Arpish table and you're clicking the momentum. Uh, table and at the moment, by the way, this is from yesterday. So at the moment, for those of you watching this, um, to get an idea of um, stocks which are, are, are taking my interest, and there you've got the names. I've highlighted them in yellow for a reason. And similarly in the past one, now you might say, "Am I crazy? A bank?" Well, it's come up on those valuations. Um, and I'm going to come through some other stocks which, as a result of this, has come up. So don't worry, I'm going to go through them uh, as well in a second. So, like I said, with the radar. It allows me to do that type of examination. Um, uh, what then happens with the, with the momentum radar, it allows me to look at those stocks uh, as well. One of the things I want to talk about now, because we've talked about, uh, and we'll come back to it, and I'll show you actual examples from today. Uh, uh, Alpesh table, I've talked about the momentum radar. I want to talk about the filter now, the momentum value filter. So if I were to click on that, that's going to show me stocks that are using my proprietary criteria, it says it here, which combine medium term value with short and medium term price momentum. So this starting point for me for further investigation, stocks which you know, I expect I could well have um, the ability to rise 20% uh, over uh, a relatively short period of time. So how does that work? When I click on that, the first thing I want to do when I click on that is then, again, I want to make sure they've got a bullish momentum rating of an A grade. I want to look for the ones with a value growth rating uh, of nine or eight, so pretty high value growth rating, and which are going to show me all green arrows here. So they're up over all these time frames. Then bang, as soon as that happens, I want to then click on the momentum radar uh, on the best list. So I'll start at the top, perhaps, and go all the way down and say, right, these ones have got, in one go, took me no time at all, these ones have got, uh, they've got, good value growth rating over the longer term. Even though I know we're trading short term, they've got good bullish momentum, and that's a measure. My system, using my criteria, goes through the MAC, the stochastic, and other momentum measures, and then grades these ABC uh, based on a, wait, a weighting. There's an overall rating which combines everything from short term momentum, longer term value growth, uh, uh, and then I'm gonna scan those. Bang, I've got names. I click on the momentum radar to see the image, uh, and then just to make sure, yep, I can see the valuation, uh, I can see the trend upwards in those, and it's given me those spread bettable stocks. So, say for spread bet action, um, then what do we do? What do we, what are we doing there? Alpesh table, you can see there. I've clicked on that. Um, for short-term daily spread bet ideas, I want to see which of these have moved the most over two days. I then want to click on momentum to check the MACD and stochastic on the daily and weekly charts. Okay, simple. What I've got is I've clicked on the Alpesh table, then I've ranked them by their movements over the percentage over the last two days, so I can see which have moved the most, and then I just click on Momentum, Radar, to again confirm that the MACD and the Stochastic is doing the things that I mentioned in this time frame and the next, so in the daily and the weekly, for instance. That very quickly gives me the best spread bet ideas with the lowest risk to the downside because they've got momentum uh, and I've got the names immediately. I don't have to look through thousands of stocks. It's all done for me. 
the upper table uh, gets all the layout done for me. I'm able to rank it at the click of another button. Uh, how simple is that? And then I can click on the stop and look at the momentum, which is all laid out for me uh, to make sure that in the time frame, uh, the daily and the weekly, the MACD is rising or flat at worst and the stochastic is uh, rising. Bang. Within, once you get used to it, within five minutes, I've got a whole list of stops to then focus on for that. So let's look at some of these. Let's look at how this comes about then. So having clicked on the momentum radar then, I see a rising MACD and stochastic on the weekly chart. I would have preferred to have got in at the point A, where you can see the point A, which I've marked in yellow. You see what I'm looking for? I'm actually looking to get in when the MACD is flat to rising and the stochastic is rising. I want to get in too late, obviously, um, because that will tell me then that the trend uh, is started. So we'll look at the weekly bars. We've got a value growth rating of 8, so I'm, I'm biased to be long anyway. I know the bullish momentum is A grade, so that's even greater news. I, I clicked on the momentum, saw those moving in the upward direction. Wow, saved me loads of time, got the name. I got the name from the previous screen that I showed you, and then clicked on the momentum radar, saw this, thought yes. And if not, I scroll to the next one. If I think, oh, it's too late, like with this, I would have preferred to go, now, now I'm thinking, now it's too late, it's too late, look, it's moved too much. So I think, right, let's scroll to the next one, scroll to the next one. Within a few minutes, I've gone through a whole load of them. But the great beauty with this is at any given moment, I don't have trading stress. I don't have trading stress because all I have to do is look at my radar and I know what the value growth rating is, bang, right there, bullish momentum is, and where the MACD sits on it. So I could give you a view, and I'm going to in a second, of stocks that I like without having to, oh, is it, can I, isn't it, what's going to happen? I can also, I'm going to also show you basically how I'd set a target for any of these. And the target, the easiest target is extrapolate the trend in the direction it's going up to the most recent resistance, substantial resistance level. And that has got to be your target. How long will it take to hit that target? Usually the same amount of time it took to get away from it, to have bottomed from it. It tends to mirror that. It tends to as a general rule. Let's look at some of these that have come up then on the Alpish Patel radar, which I looked at, uh, which I looked at when I first examined the Alpha Spital table, uh, then I looked on the momentum radar. Uh, I've just got a question, does it look at US stocks and ETFs? It does look at US stocks and ETFs. There what tends to happen is um, the, the value growth rating is out of six, and the reason for that is because we have different measures and metrics, but everything else is the same for both ETFs and US stocks. So yes, indeed, it looks at both of those, uh, because it, it basically shares scope plus the additional module. So, let's look at Aberdeen Asset Management, uh, and let's see how this is going, okay? Why did, I, why did this come up? Why do I like it? Well, of course, you've got the trend. The ones I'm going to talk to you about, by the way, now are slightly overbought. They've been rising and going flat, and the stochastic starting to fall. So, these are all stocks, which, as you know, I'm bullish on the market for the year, because that's how I started off this whole discussion, because I think earnings are going to continue exceeding expectation. But because I'm bullish on the market, uh, what's happening is any of these which are overbought and are looking probably to fall, which are the ones I want to highlight for you, uh, I think are buying opportunities and will resume upwards because I say I'm bullish on the market and they've got good value growth uh, rating. So if I was shorting any of these uh, in the short term for spread betting, it's because of the short term momentum being lower. Longer term, I'm looking for the opportunity to go long in them. So what are the other names? Well, Centrica's there. Now, Centrica, you can see the MACD is still rising. Uh, the stochastic is flattening. So expect this at some point to come off a little bit, but then resume backwards. Why back upwards? Uh, and why is this the buying opportunity? Well, the stochastic shows it, but also value growth rating is high. Uh, so I know it's going to be a buying opportunity on dips. I don't mind sh uh, trading, uh, shorting it on spread bets in the short term, but I know my bias remains uh, uh, to the upside. Same kind of picture with EasyJet, the uptrend is very much intact, overbought, and therefore what will probably happen is it'll come off a little bit, uh, but then resume back upwards as well. ITV was similar kind of characteristics, stochastic there, you can see uh, what's happening. By the way, my monthly newsletter for Alpish Patel Special Edition users, I cover all of these kinds of stocks and training techniques anyway uh, each, each month. Uh, to go into this and explain all of this and which stocks I like. So I actually even do the work for you each month uh, as well. 
Uh, uh, other ones which came up, Rank It Bankers that came up uh, 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 over there as well, similar kind of story. Uh, Rolls Royce, uh, you've got, uh, which means again, uptrend probably going to resume, but we're going to get some sh downside moves before we move upwards. Um, so I wanted to mention those stocks. I said it was to give you an overview of the key parts of the Upstream Special Edition. Now these, these webinars are into three parts. There's the one today. You all have got emails for the next two, uh, which I believe are next week, where I'll go into different parts of uh, Upstream Special Edition, and also through the newsletter you'll all be receiving from APSI. You'll also see through that uh, all or, uh, all of this reiterated. Why it saves so much time. Why it finds me stocks which allow me to, to predict through the market. What I want to do now is therefore talk about stop losses uh, and a trading technique uh, which I've been asked to talk about. Now as you know, good traders, they do three things. They get money management right, they get their trading system. Well the trading system element I've spoken to you about this evening uh, to some extent and obviously through the next two webinars and through the newsletter I'll be doing more of that as well. Uh, trading psychology I won't really discuss today. Uh, but what I do want to talk about is stop losses, so we've got money management to discuss. And this looks like a really big, complicated, uh, ugly uh, image you can see on screen now, uh, what top traders do right. Let me explain. It's actually taken from um, the performance of one of the people who was interviewed in my very first book, Bill Lipschitz, who was Global Head of Foreign Exchange at Salomon Brothers when Warren Buffett was chairman there, and Bill was in my book uh, talking about trading. This is what his, how his fund performs. Bill's a lot older than me. His fund goes back to 1990. Uh, and these are the performance uh, figures. Now what I want to show you here is, uh, let me explain all of this to you. Most professional, if not all professional hedge fund managers, all professional traders exhibit exactly this characteristic, the good ones who make money. They have lots of small losses, as you can see marked out in red. I've shaded it in red. And four out of ten of their trades are probably losses. Okay? They have lots of small gains. And four out of ten trades are gains, small gains. Two out of ten are gold. Those are the big trends. Whether you're spread betting or investing over the long term, that's the figure. Two out of ten, guess what? 80-20 uh, rule. 20% give you 80% of your returns. What you might find striking is even great professional traders don't only just make profits. This is what it actually looks like. Now, I put this image together for you. Uh, to explain uh, explain that. Now, any software has got to be able to get us into those trends. The idea with the momentum radar is it gets us there, saves us lots of time. The upstream table gets us there, finds us the leads, saves a lot of time so that we can look at the momentum table and bang, uh, we find the names. Or we go through the momentum value filter and go then onto momentum radar and look at those stocks which are showing those MACD and stochastic traits and bank we're in and we get into those 20% which are going to make us the money. It's as simple as that. The only reason any of you are going to be subscribing to any of these software packages is if it makes you money uh, and, and, and not because you want a viewpoint uh, to talk at the pub on various stocks. So we've got to get back to basics and what makes us money. Now, that's the first part of what the webinar was was how did we find those, the 2 and 20, uh, the, the 2 out of 10 rather, the 2 out of 10. This part is how do we get the stop losses so we don't get any big losses. And that's a trading technique I want to uh, uh, just leave you with now. You see, the biggest problem in terms of psychology, I said I wouldn't talk psychology, but actually I will talk a tiny bit of psychology. The biggest problem in trading is trading psychology is the trouble with the loss is that it's not just the loss of money, but it's the loss of ego. Pat Arbor, again in my first book, Chairman Chicago Board of Trade, the World Wide Derivatives Exchange, said that when I interviewed him. Uh, it's the ego part. But we're going to have to just not, it's not, no point in my saying to you, oh, just take a loss, be disciplined. That doesn't help any of us. Actually, the best way to get rid of the ego is knowledge. And the knowledge I'm going to give you is one stop loss mechanism that's used by not just my hedge fund, but actually by Bill's, because it was Bill who taught me it. Um, and off the back of that and his techniques, which I've mentioned in this piece of software uh, uh, and, and touched upon tonight, uh, and that's how I built my own asset management company um, to try and follow in Bill's footsteps. So what is it? Well, many of you will be familiar with this, and you've spread betting, the rules apply uh, just as much. We don't want to risk more than 2 to 3% of our capital in any one trade. What does that mean? 
What does that mean and why 2 to 3%? Let me explain all of that to you because it's incredibly important. If you're going to be successful making money, uh, it's not enough that I just show you how my software gets you into those trending stocks uh, for the spread betters. But this is probably the most important thing I could teach you. Um, uh, and this is why in every one of my books and, and FT columns and stuff, uh, I try to mention this when I can, but people just want stock picks. So let me, t let me tell you, it's going to be the most important five minutes. Uh, uh, that you can spend. The reason for the 2% rule really is simple. If you're wrong five times in a row, you're only down 10%. Most people, if they're wrong five times in a row, are down about 50% because they're betting vast sums of money. Uh, uh, preserving profits like Scrooge is absolutely essential. Why is it essential? Well, let's imagine you're down only 5% or 10%. Okay? Then that means with the remaining money, you only need to make 11% to break even again to get back to break even. Let's say you were down, uh, my maths is, uh, uh, my intern's got the maths wrong here. If you were down 50%, then with the remaining money, you would have to get a 100% return. So if you went from a, for argument's sake, 10,000 pounds to 5,000 pounds, then you've got to double 5,000 pounds. You've got to get a 100% return on 5,000 pounds to get back up to 100 uh, to, to get back to £10,000. The point is, when you're down only a little bit, you only have to get a tiny bit more to recover. As soon as you start getting down, say, even 20%, 25% what you're going to get. Warren Buffett doesn't get 25%. See what I'm saying? So what the misers do is they make sure they don't go down too far, down this, uh, down this lane, as it were, down that lane. Uh, uh, and that's why the two percent rule. But how do we apply that? How do we apply that in reality? What does it mean in reality? Now, let me explain. Assume. Let's start at the top. Assume you have a forty pip stop loss. I'm going to I'm going to show you a, a method of picking your stop loss in a second. But assume it was a forty pip stop loss. Then that has to, according to our rules, equal two percent of our risk capital. If our risk capital is a hundred thousand pounds, then two percent of that is Two thousand pounds, obviously. Therefore, forty pips should equal two thousand pounds. Yeah. So one pip should make or cost you fifty pounds, because two thousand divided by forty is fifty. If one lot is ten pounds or whatever it is you're trading, you got to work out what one pip is worth. And since you can afford to do fifty pounds a point. Uh, we would uh, uh, we'd be able to do fifty pounds a point because we know that we would then forty times fifty would give us two thousand. That's the maths of how we work it out. But what you need to know is how do you get your forty pip stop loss to begin with? How do you get your forty pip? Let me explain. The key method I'm going to show you is what many of you might have heard of the average true range. Um, for the moment, assume, because we can, the average true range is basically the range on a given period. Um, how do you find that maximum stop loss, that 40 pips or whatever else it is? Uh, this is how you do it. Okay? You work out that your stop loss will be two times your average true range, the ATR, which, which um, the software ShareScope allows you to, to find. It's simple. It's got an ATR. Or you do it by eye. I do it by eye because... If software needed to be that precise, um, uh, sorry, if you need to be that precise in your system, then your system can't be very robust. Now, so I do it by, I look at the last 14 days and just roughly work out, well, the average range each day, for instance, is whatever the security is, 30 points or 50 points, or in the case of the FTSE, it might be even 100 points. Um, and then I say the stop loss, uh, 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 and I tend to look at it over the last 14 days, and it's a pretty good period over which to get it. Remember, this is not, should it be 14 days or 13? No, it should be 12 and a half. Because if you had to be that precise, you're probably not got a robust, profitable system to begin with. Okay? So stop loss, two times ATR. I fixed an entry. It's not trailing. Okay? I explain why it's not trailing in a second. Um, the idea is, if it moves two times that from the point I've entered, then that's my Stops. Now, that could be 40 pips. In the last example I gave you, it was 40 pips. It could be 10, depending on the security or whatever it is. But w let me explain this further. What, how do we use it? 2 times ATR has to, therefore, equal 2% of total risk capital. 
Now, if you said to me, I want to put my stop loss even further, I want to put it three times ATR, that's fine. Still got to equal two times total risk capital. It's got to be total risk capital. It's got to be 2% all the time because you can't afford to have a string of losses because you'll go so deep underwater that you won't recover. That's what professional traders do. Private investors don't do that. Let's look at this in reality. Two times ATR would get us where the green line is. Three times gets there. Further out stop loss. So you might think, well, why wouldn't I always put a further out stop loss? Well, let's go through it. ATR is 25 pips. For argument's sake, I've picked a security where it's 25 pips. Two times, therefore, means it's 50 pips. So that's the green line, yeah? Three times means 75 pips, obviously. So that's the, the red line, yeah? That all makes sense, obviously. Let's go to the next thing. Assume your risk capital is 100,000. Two times 100K is 2K. Yeah, that's so your 2% has to be 2,000 pounds. That's the maximum you'll risk. Two times ATR is 50 pips. Therefore, 40 pounds a pip is how much you would bet or risk or so on. That's your bet size. That's your trade size. What happens if you did three times ATR? Well, then your bet size has to be 27 pounds a pip. Do you see how you, okay, you put your stop loss further out. You haven't lost more money. See, people always complain to me, go, oh, well, I sometimes put my stop loss further out, but then I had bigger losses. No, you didn't. You shouldn't have because you shouldn't have increased your bet size. You don't increase it, you reduce it. So then you might say to me, well, Arpish, why wouldn't I always just put a further out stop loss? Well, the reason is your bet size is smaller. It's smaller, therefore, when you're right and get a big trend, you won't make as much. So you say, well, in that case, Arpish, I should do a bigger bet size. Uh, and therefore have a smaller, have a shorter stop loss. That's right. But a closer stop loss will get hit more often. Do you see how trading works, the swings and roundabouts? You get hit more often with your stop loss, but you'll make bigger gains when you win. Further out stop loss, you don't get, you don't get as many losses. Your win to loss ratio is better, but you make less when you're profitable. It almost equals its way out. To be honest, the, the best answer in my experience uh, it's probably about a two and a half ATR, just out of gut instinct and experience and what I've found, that I tend to find works works pretty much good for me because it gives me a good win to loss ratio, it gives me a good amount of money. By the way, once you've got that trend, you don't just sit back and say, oh, that's it then. You want to add to that position when you've got that trend. But what about moving the stop loss? Remember I said it was fixed? The reason is, remember what I told you what my exit was? My exit is when the momentum is lost. The momentum's lost, I'm getting out. So I look at the MACD and the stochastic on the Alpesh momentum radar. That's why I have a fixed stop loss there, because if it hits that or it gives me an exit on my MACD, then I'm out either way. Got it? The loss is 2% trading capital, whether it falls to 2 or 3 ATR. I've explained uh, uh, how the interaction is there. And this, this slide then explains that in, in text. Um, total loss fixed at 2% whether it's a 2 ATR or a 3 ATR, uh, and the, the downside of each and what the overall benefits of each are. The winter loss ratio gets tweaked, but your overall profitability changes, okay, uh, on there. The most important thing being that learn to love your small losses. That's why you have, an, that's why you have a 2% uh, risk uh, issue there because you don't want to be heartbroken when you get the big losses that alone will make you far more profitable because what's going to happen is you're not going to get big losses so you're going to keep hold of all those wonderful trades where you thought when you did them wow i'm the next george soros because i got some big winning trades but then you lost them in this rubbish end over at the other end the heartbreak end what i've just taught you will avoid you the heartbreak end which means you keep more of your profits but the first part of the webinar taught you how to get some of those trends which only happen 20% of the time using the Alpish Patel table and the momentum radar so that you get some of those big gains to begin with. There's no point in having big gains if you're going to, you know, um, whittle them away with big losses. That's why I've got to teach you the stop loss as well as the big gain part. So that's how the two parts of the presentation worked. That's this evening. Now, remember, I've got, I've got two more webinars next week where I'm going to go through other parts of the Alpha Patel Special Edition. And in my monthly newsletters that I give to all my subscribers, I go through individual stocks as well as a little bit of learning and education as well. Um, so you get uh, all this reinforced, this kind of trading technique reinforced as the Alpha Patel Special Edition uh, uses. You get 
the, the stocks, how to evaluate them, and the names that I like, as I've shown you how I'm reading the MAC. So it all really drills in and gets in there, trains you up, gets you basically as a, a, a as close to possible as an apprentice because you've got the monthly newsletter which is giving that education, giving you the market overview uh, where I think things are going. So what I want to do is just thank everybody because our, our time is pretty much up. So I want to thank everyone uh, for this. Let me know if you've got any questions. Uh, I've got a few more minutes for questions. Uh, but other than that, I hope you really found it invaluable. This is, this is combined education of the last oh, 30 odd years and that's what got me into winning FT competitions on the front page of the magazines as I showed you and, and Bloomberg and all the rest of it. Um, learning these techniques and applying them and got me an asset management company uh, which I've set up as I say uh, because uh, all of this helped and worked and, and so on. So I just want to say thank you all and I hope you'll all benefit from uh, all, of, all of the education and uh, say so if you've enjoyed it feel free to leave feedback as well. Uh, there. Uh, so once again, thank you all.